the third topic for the session. In this third topic, we'll see for a manufacturing concern, how do you estimate working capital requirements? We'll also see how do you estimate working capital requirements from a profit and loss account. Let us see this illustration. Let us work out together. PQ Limited, a company newly commencing business on 2013, has the under mentioned projected profit and loss account. Sales is 2 lakh 20, 2 lakh 10 thousand. Cost of goods sold is 1 lakh 53 thousand. Sales minus cost of goods sold is gross profit that is 57 thousand. Administrative expenses are 14 thousand. Selling expenses are 13 thousand. So total. In that expenses are twenty seven thousand. So fifty seven thousand minus twenty seven thousand gives a thirty thousand, which is profit before tax. Provision for taxation is ten thousand, which is profit after tax twenty thousand. The total is also more. The cost of goods sold has been arrived as under. Material used is eighty four thousand. Wages and manufacturing expenses are sixty two thousand five hundred. Depreciation is twenty three thousand five hundred, which gives a total of one lakh seventy thousand. Minus stock of finished goods, that is 10% of goods produced but not yet sold, is 17,000. So 1 lakh 70,000 minus 17,000 gives us 1 lakh 53,000. This cost of goods sold. And this is how we got the cost of goods sold figure in the profit and loss account 1 lakh 53,000. Let us see what else is given to us. From the figures given, we relate only to the finished goods and not to work in progress. Goods equal to 15% of the year's production in terms of physical units will be in process on the average requiring full materials but for only 40% for other expenses. So only 40% contribute to other expenses and 50% for the year's production. The company believes in keeping materials equal to 2 months consumption in stock. So how much is the material period? 2 months consumption. Average timeline in payment of expenses is 1 month. So all expenses you pay 1 month later. Suppliers of materials will extend 1.5 months credit. Sales will be 20% on cash and the net the rest of it is on two months credit. 70% of tax will be paid in advance in quarterly installments. The company wishes to keep 8,000 rupees in cash, so it's a current asset. 10% has to be added to the estimated figure for unforeseen contingencies. You have to estimate working capital requirements. So keep it simple what is given to you. From this information, we try to estimate an estimate for a manufacturing company. And second part, we're doing it trying to do it from a profit and loss account. Let's start with current assets. We need is raw material. Go back and see if there any raw material given to us. If you see, raw materials given to us is 84,000. And if you remember, they have told us also in the given over there, raw material period is how much? Two months, right? So how will you find out the normal raw material consumption? If you say the company believes in keeping raw materials equal to two months consumption in stock. So two months is the raw material holding period. So 84,000 is the raw material cost. 84,000 into two divided by 12 will give us what? Raw materials for current assets that is 14,000. So we got one thing clear. Let's go to work in progress now. Now, again, if you remember that paragraph they have told you over is that goods, the figures relates only to finished goods but not to work in progress. For work in progress, they give us additional information which they say goods equal to 15% of the year's production in terms of physical units, which will be in process on the average requiring full materials but only 40% for other expenses. So 15% requires for what? Work in progress in the form of raw material. How much raw materials are given to us is 84,000. Out of 84,000, 15% only belongs to work in progress. So 84,000 into 15% gives us how much? 12,600. Similarly for wages, they have told us this is 40% for other expenses. Similarly, let us see how many wages and other expenses given to us. Wages and other expenses, manufacturing expenses are 62,500. Out of it, 40% is belong to others. So 40% is the remaining amount which is contributing under work in progress stage as such. Similarly, goods equal to 15% of the year production. So out of total cost, only 15% belongs over here as such. So out of 62,500, 15% belongs over here and 40% belongs to the actual expenses. So into 15%, into 40% if you do, you get wages and manufacturing expenses for work in progress, which is when you solve it up, it comes to 3,750. Let us clear, continue. We have raw material done. We have work in progress done. Let us go to finished goods. Now, finished goods, if you see, is how much? They are given to us over here is 17,000 in the profit and loss account. Right? 10% of the goods are produced but not yet sold. It means 10% is not taking into account as such. Similarly, depreciation, if you remember, is 223,500. It means 10% of depreciation also is not 
being sold as such. So what do you do minus the 10% of 23,000, find the 2,350. So stock of finished goods after depreciation will be how much? 17,000 minus 2,350 is 14,650. So we are done with raw material, we are done with work in progress, we are done with finished goods after depreciation. Next to what do we have? We have as debtors. Let us find out the amount of debtors now. Now let us find out when they are given us cost of goods sold is how much they have given us is 1,53,000. In this minus the depreciation part, if you see depreciation is included in cost of goods sold, so we need to minus that part. Depreciation is 23,500, right? Only 10% if you see belongs. So 10% is, is actually not used during the year. So what we have to minus over here? 90%. If you remember 10% we already used in your finished goods. So remaining is how much? 90%. 90% you can minus over at this stage. So 90% of 235,000 is how much? 21,150. So after depreciation how much do you get? 1,31,850. How much are your administrative and selling expenses? Administrative and selling expenses are 14,000 and 13,000. So total how much is the cost we have is 15,88,500. Right? Out, now they sell us that out of this should be your cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold should be how much? 15 lakh 88,500 including all your expenses be direct and indirect nature in incurring at various stages. Out of your total cost of sales what is happening they are telling you is that one and a half month credit you extend 20% of the sales is on cash remaining on credit. So sales is 20% on cash and 80% will be on credit. And for credit, how much credit period do you give? You give two months credit. So find out your cash sales, find out your credit sales. So credit sales will be how much? 15,850. Four fifth is your credit sales. Similarly, you give them two months credit. So how much will be the amount of credit sales or the amount of debtors if you solve it up? 21,180. So you got the amount of raw material 14,000, you got the amount of total work in progress including raw materials and wages, you got the amount of finished goods that is 14,650, you found out the amount of debtors that is from your total cost, depreciation didn't include it, remember depreciation is never to be considered, it's a financial in nature. So we excluding depreciation we did over here and we found out the amount of credit sales. If you remember they also gave us how much cash do we require in the last paragraph, this total cash required almost all the times is 8000. So 8000 cash in hand is a current asset. Add up all the amount you get total current asset is 74,180. How do we find working capital? Current assets minus current liabilities. Let us go to the liability part. They tell you average lag in the payment of expenses is one month. So wages and administrative Manufacturing expenses are paid one month later. So it's a current liability now for a tune of 62,500. Administrative expenses are paid next month. It's a current liability today. How much the tune of 14,000? Selling expenses are also paid next month tune of 13,000. So if you add up all of them, it comes to 89,500. When the lag is happening next month. So per month is how much? Divide by 12, we get 7,458. Now, Expenses are done. What will come under your current liability? Your creditors. How much is the total sales of raw materials? 84,000. Right? Raw materials purchased are 84,000. Whom do you purchase from? Creditors. So 84,000 is your creditors amount. Similarly, how much is the lag for them? For them it is 3 months. So 3 will take into sure. So when you find out the amount for them, how will you find it out? You find for them is if 3 divided by 24. Why? Because suppliers will extend 1 and a half month credit. So if you want to find out the 1 and a half month, it comes to how much for creditors? It comes to 10,500. So add up your current liabilities for expenses and creditors. How much do we get? Total current liabilities become 17,958. Now what we need to do? We need to find networking capital. How do you find networking capital? Current assets minus current liabilities. So if you add up your current assets minus your current liabilities, total get 5 lakh 62,000 and 22. Similarly, add up 10% for contingency, 10% of the amount becomes 5622. Networking capital requirement is 618,044. This is sorry, 61,844. This is how you do as the networking capital requirement. Keep it simple, add up your current assets, taking into account raw material, work in progress, and finished goods sale. Total current assets were 74,180. Add up your total current liabilities, which came up to 
17,950. Current working capital was current assets minus current loan, which came to 56,222. And a 10% for current. The same way as we did for trading concern. Total working capital requirement will be 61,844. Same way I'll do for trading concern. Do for the manufacturing concern as well. In the manufacturing, can be divided into raw material, work in progress, and finished goods stage. Keep in mind every head has certain expenses for them as well. 